Hey, Plastic Addicts. Uh, welcome back. It's been a, been a bit of a spell. Uh, today, I am going to do the full build of the Enterprise E, so be sure to stay in tune because it's going to be a fun one. I do want to start with an overview of the box and what's in the box. Uh, this is a great box art. Uh, John Eves did a wonderful job, as one would expect. The back has a buildup uh, done by Jim Small, I think. My only complaint is that it shows the ship Aztec on the front and the back, which I don't like because round two does not make Aztecs. And here's an overview of the parts, upper saucer, lower saucer. I'm gonna take a look at the, uh, excuse me, the uh, secondary hull and the nacelles and the uh, connecting piece, the shuttle bay base. Uh, that'll be next, because uh, I just showed the, uh, the pylons. And the, the deflector trench, the clear parts are great, good optics, uh, quite happy with them. Um, not much else to say there, really. And supplemental parts, lower phaser banks. Uh, oh yeah, these are the kit supply decals. I have two because I have one from a previous model. Uh, they're pretty good. I don't like the color of the lifeboats, though. They should be white. And, of course, the instruction sheet. Uh, this is a pretty simple build. There's not a whole lot of steps to this and a detailed painting guide on the back, which is nice. Now, this is the important part. The decals from HDA Model Works. These are wonderful. They're super easy to work with, super detailed, great fit. Uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time on these during the build-up because there's just so many of them to do, and the detailing is just wonderful. And it's little things, like on the bottom-most piece, uh, he's included the RCS thrusters right on the decal. Um, and uh, this is a nice piece, the vent piece, so you don't have to paint it if you don't want to on the nacelles. And a very detailed uh, instruction guide on where to lay them out. Uh, Photo Etch, it's a great set by Paragraphics. I didn't end up using most of it because I made changes to my plan throughout, but they're, they're really great pieces. And honestly, they're worth it just for the impulse vents and the, uh, the deflector pieces. Uh, two shuttle bay options, depending on whether it's Nemesis or First Contact Insurrection. Uh, hatches, pardon me. Uh, just a lot of little 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 pieces that you might need. Here's a quick look at the Tenet Control's cost-effective flasher board for starships. But I'm going to get into more details on that uh, a little later in the video. So this is a unique build in that I had planned to light it initially. And this is where I, you know, marked all the various cutouts to allow light to pass through. And I got quite a ways on it, you know, marking and cutting out pieces. I even laid down fiber optics. But I just wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't fun. I found myself actively avoiding uh, building the model uh, for several weeks. And I'd set it down and uh, decided to build it unlit. Now this I want to show this because there's still valuable things for people who do want to light their Enterprise E like this here. I did a paint and scrape. I didn't cut the windows out. I did the base coat, light blocked it off on the outside, and then used various tools for scraping. The first pass wasn't very good. The primer was too thick, this rust-oleum was too thick, so I used the Zep Purple Power to strip the whole thing and start again. And a very quick time jump forward, uh, this is the finished upper saucer. Even to the point that like I said, I had fiber optics installed and fully decaled craft acrylics. This is what I used on the lower saucer for paint blocking. Multiple coats, scraped the windows between each coat, and made for nice, clean window openings. Highly recommend it. The Tenet Controls Economy Flasher Board. Love this thing, this little blue uh, jumper gives you an option for four different lighting setups. I chose the one for flat, fast, and slow blink, but it's great because you just move it to where you want it to based on the instructions. Uh, as far as the wiring, black, common ground, red for main power. For the lighting, green or yellow is the ground for whichever light circuit it is, fast or slow. And here's a demonstration of fast, slow blink. As I said uh, when the video started, I'm going to spend a lot of time discussing the decals because, quite frankly, they're what makes this 
turns this from a bland model into something that pops uh, up close and from a distance. And this is just me showing the procedure for doing decals. We all know what it is. Cut them, wet them, place them, dry them, apply uh, solve a set just so they conform to the regular surface. But these decals are really good. The film is great uh, because it conforms really, really, really well. And um, these are a bit unique. They're not rigid like I'm used to. Like, there's a bit of flex to them, so you do have to be careful because if one side adheres and you start tugging on it, you will get some distortion. But that's really my only note about these decals. Otherwise, they're great. The fit is great. They look great. I mean, look, at I'm gushing about it because I can't stop talking about how good they are because I've built this kit ever since it came out in 96 and was always disappointed. Uh, and now I finally have one that looks fantastic on the shelf. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing another one lighted next time in the Nemesis version because these decals have really kind of reinvigorated my interest in in really doing the ship and doing it well and now that I'm reacquainted after this build I am actually keen to uh, keen to light it. I learned a lot in the first lighting attempts and I'm definitely looking forward to tackling this again and of course I can't move on without doing a quick pass showing the finished upper and lower saucer with all the decals in place now this is where the fun really begins, because if you start with a saucer, you're going to be lulled into a false sense of security about how well this kit goes together. As I said in the opening, there's only a few sub-assemblies, which is nice. And in this case, the pylons go together exceedingly well. There's, I don't really have any complaints here. Um, I don't think I had to do any sanding. I think I just, or any filling, excuse me. I think I just sanded the, uh, sanded the seams. And uh, they were they were good to go. No, I am incorrect. I'm sorry. There is a big seam that needs to be filled and sanded. Um, where'd, my, where'd my head go? Anyway, the nacelles are probably the second easiest part. Or pardon me, the pylons are the second easiest part. The nacelles did require very little work. The secondary hull as a whole, terrible. So here's the seam I forgot to mention. It is far from the worst one on the kit, but the positioning is still kind of unacceptable. Um, secondary hull, the basic assembly is easy. You put the two halves together and then find out that uh, it's a little bit warped and they don't fit that uh, that well. Now, that's not the end of the world. Uh, I was able to squeeze it together, but you can use clamps, uh, tape, elastic bands. Uh, take your pick. It's... Uh, tools of the trade we should all have anyway but um like i said putting the two halves together pretty straightforward the difficulty comes when you start attaching all the other stuff the deflector trench uh that whole rear fascia assembly whatever it's called but by far the worst offender is the deflector trench you know here's me sliding it in and um, I didn't actually remove any material from the back because it, I don't think it was going to make a difference. But I had to forcefully squeeze one side. Like one side fit really well. And the other side need to be forced in. And then I actually used crazy glue with it as well to, to hold it in place. Uh, this piece fits in really well though. Like dropping it in i don't mean the fit and finish just apply your glue and as you can see just drop it in it goes there give it a little press and then you know press and hold till the glue sets and um but you can already see the big seam all the way around it uh then we're gonna put in the tractor beam emitter i don't know what this piece is doesn't matter just an interesting little piece to go on the back and uh once again look at the poor fit all the way around that uh, the shuttle bay fits nicely, though, so I guess we can call that a win. It was a really nice change to be able to just glue it and drop it in and not have to think about it at all. As for the Bussards, I uh, did a quick test fit, but they were 
glued in first from behind uh, using the thin glue. I've been using two types, the Tamiya Thick and the Tester's Thin. Um, tester's Thin I liked just flows better. Drop the piece in and then uh, also add the um, upper piece for the formation light. Now what I did is I painted the clear parts red, clear red, pardon me, by Tamiya, and then a silver behind them just to give them a little bit of uh, pop. And then of course assemble them, you know, the usual, put your glue on both sides, put them together, make sure everything's lined up. Luckily the pins are good on this one and the alignment is uh, is pretty good. And here's the mostly assembled um, secondary hull. You can see all the areas where fill was required. Where the pylons meet the body, I used Drydex wood filler because I wanted to be able to shape it quickly. A wet Q-tip does the trick and you don't sand off any raised detail by accident. I uh, used some on the pylons, end up using spot putty on the other side spot putty around that rear fascia, spot putty down the middle. A little bit of putty there, but this is where the trench was a real pain. There's a crazy glue and a lot of sanding to get that together. And virtually the same shot, just showing everything sanded down. Um, you really had to shape where the pylons meet the body so there isn't a big step. So I took off a lot of material and sanded that smooth. But here's all the spots um, with regular 150 grit sandpaper and then run across with an 800 um, wet sand just to smooth everything out. And um, I don't think it needed too much touch up afterwards. I think the first pass luckily was very good on this. I didn't see too many issues in the primer. And uh, yeah, if you build this ship, be ready. There's a lot of work to be done on the secondary hull, but as you saw from the beginning, it looks really, really sharp when it's done. So normally I wouldn't spend so much time talking with decals um, because applying decals is applying decals. Once you get it mastered, it's good to go. But for this ship, the decals make the model and I wanted to kind of detail exactly what is involved and how much cutting and how much time is involved to get this wonderful final look. Is it time consuming? Yes. Is it worth it? 100%. Um, I've talked to Jerry at HDA Model Works a number of times and I know that he spent months getting these decals right, looking at meshes, doing test prints, measuring, cutting them, placing them on his own ship just to make sure everything fits. So the amount of work required to make this set was extreme. And um, I've won, I'm glad he stuck with it because I'm not interested in buying the A Creation or I guess A Creation reprints as they are because A Creation went into business. Whatever ones are out there, I believe, are scans of old versions. So, why am I showing the decals in painstaking de detail? <laughs> Excuse me. Because, well, one, they look great, they're easy to use, they fit, like they just fit, which is so nice. And this also gives me a chance to show you that when you use these decals, once you get the base coat on, there's not really much in the way of detail painting. I think it was just the phaser strips, um, the warp engine parts, the impulse engine parts. And I actually painted the bridge uh, dome. Jerry, excuse me, HDA Works slash Jerry sends a decal for it, but I hand painted it. Because I enjoy uh, enjoy hand painting. The um, I had a bit of issue applying the decals, but it wasn't an issue with the decals themselves. I used a clear coat that I found it after afterwards was defective, and it didn't cure completely. It stayed sticky. So when I applied them, 
the very first part that sat down bonded immediately. So then I had to go back and put some water on it, lift them up like this with the uh, with a hobby knife or a uh, set of tweezers just so I could move them and place them properly. That's actually the first time this ever happened to me in 20 years of modeling. I've never had a clear coat issue like that. I've had some that have contaminants in them and cause fish eyes, which is really irritating, but you can overcome that. So yeah, um, lesson learned, I will not be using that clear coat again. And thankfully I have enough experience under my belt that it didn't ruin the decals or ruin the process. It just stay patient, assess the situation, and and come up with a solution. Um, only in a few cases should you smash your model. <laughs> As uh, I am embarrassed to say, I have done at least once in the past. So, continuing on with the secondary hull. As you can see, there is a ton of decals on this. Um, I just laid them down, and I found the fit was really good, but you may find that you want to separate the decals into individual panels to give yourself a bit more control. It's definitely not something you have to do, but you certainly have the option, and each modeler is different. So this is something I haven't done before. This is kind of a collection of shots of problem areas and things I can things I can comment on, things I may not have corrected on purpose just to show the problems. Like, um, the windows were a bit of a mess. Um, my markers didn't work, and that's why they're a bit inconsistent. In the future, I would actually just use pencil. It's much more subtle than the marker, as you can see from, from the top of the screen that's kind of disappeared now. Subtlety is the key, and that's what I was going for, and didn't quite accomplish it with the tools I had. Where the saucer meets the body is the... There's a lot of problem spots on this model, but this is the absolute worst. The fit is terrible. I don't have a solution yet. I'm going to look deeper when I do this model again, but... Like, poor fit there. The, um, the piece behind the shuttle bay took so much filler to, to blend it into the hull. And even now, you can still see there's spacing between the saucer and the secondary hull. So it's probably going to be a matter of removing a bit of material, test fitting, removing, test fitting, removing, test fitting, and just seeing how it turns out. Uh, now, this is my mistake. I should not have used a black marker on here because now the yellow doesn't show up at all. Um, I would actually, once again, probably use pencil to um, just to, or maybe even a wash, just to show a little bit of detail but not too much. Where the pylons meet the body is another trouble spot. Um, the back flows fairly well, but you end up with a big gap right along the body. So that took not too much filler, though. But right here, you can see where I had to grind it down, shave it down, sand it down to get a nice, smooth transition. Otherwise, there's a great big bump at the forward base of the pylon. Even with all that filler, the fantail turned out exceeding well. You can see there's a couple little spots I need to go back and do spot touch-ups on. But, um, and I should have caught that one in my prime check. But otherwise, that turned out great and I didn't lose very much detail at all. And those are by far the worst spots. Not the worst thing for an experienced modeler, but maybe challenging for a newbie. Well, this is the part where I just get to be creative, having fun with some... Uh, Lighting, since I had the the black curtain set up to do the uh, final photos anyway, which you'll be able to see on my Instagram at Jason's Model Shop, and I do daily, semi-daily updates on TikTok and Instagram, just showing the various things I'm working on, and then I do a final long-form video like this one to wrap the whole whole thing up. Uh, all in all, it was a lot of fun. Once I got on track after deciding not to light it. And that is my build of the 1701E as seen in first contact. A lot of fun. Looks great with the decals. There are certainly a number of challenges to overcome, but that keeps things interesting. 
I hope you enjoyed this build, and if you would like one of your own, do not hesitate to reach out, because I currently have opening for commissions. Take care, and see you next time, y'all.